good to see you. It's good to have you here. I also want to welcome our online viewers this morning. Thank you for joining us today. As well as our first time guests, thank you for joining us. And again, please join us at Connection Corner if you will. We'd love to spend a few moments with you and just, uh, just hear a little bit about, about who you are and, and how the Lord brought you here. So, thank you for joining us. Well, today uh, we're going to be continuing our series from the book of Ephesians. You can turn to Ephesians 2. We'll begin our reading in verse 11. And this is the series, of course, that we're doing entitled The Journey of a Jesus Follower. And our plan is to uh, teach throughout this book of Ephesians. And, and, and again, one of the most difficult things about, about uh, uh, teaching through a book is, is, uh, is taking the subject matter, the words that are, that are presented, and making them relevant to, uh, to the church today. But I believe God uh, is faithful to do this. So Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11 says, Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders. And I'm reading from the NLT. You were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were proud of their circumcision, even though it, circumcision, affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from citizenship among the people of Israel and you did not know the covenant promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. But now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united the Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with his commandments and regulations. He made peace between the Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from the two groups. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross, and our hostility towards each other was put to death. He brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles who were far away from him, and peace to the Jews who were near. Now all of us can come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. Can you say amen to that? Amen. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together, we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of his dwelling where God lives by his spirit. Father, I thank you for the reading of your word. Lord, these next few moments, bless the speaking of your word, I pray. Holy Spirit, have your way. Speak to our hearts. Quicken our spirits. Give us the ears to hear what the Spirit of God has to say. And help us, God, to understand what this word means to us today how we can take your word and apply it to our lives and how we can become dwelling places of your spirit. Holy Spirit, bless the people of God, I pray now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, again, today we're going to be continuing our series, The Journey of a Jesus Follower. And I'm going to share a message entitled, One People, One Faith, one journey. One people. One faith. One journey. Say that with me. One people. One faith. One journey. Proud to the coming of Christ. Proud to the Lord Jesus Christ coming to earth. Man's existence on earth was very divided. And some would say it still is. Now it is divided by choice. Before the coming of Christ, 
It was just the way it was. Divided by race, divided by culture, divided by tradition, divided by religious beliefs, religious practices. And not only was this division acceptable, but most believed, Jew and Gentile, that it was right and proper. God, who made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth, has given to all of us a purpose, a purpose to grope for him in order to find him. And men went about this in their own way, mostly based on culturally long-standing established beliefs. In Ephesians, Paul places man into two groups, Jew and Gentile. And he reveals how God made the two into one. One people of the same faith traveling through life together. Paul wrote in Ephesians 4, verses 4 through 6, there is one body and one spirit, just as you was called in one hope of your calling. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. There is one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. Christ came to make us one. He came to tear down the wall of separation. He came to bring all men to a place of peace with God. Apart from Jesus, any man, any woman, any child, really has no peace. But does not have the peace that God promised. But Jesus came. And he brought the good news of peace to the Gentiles who were far away from God. And Paul said he brought the peace of God to the Jews who were near. That tells me that although the Jews had the law and the commandments of God, they did not have peace. Although they were near God, nearer to God than the Gentiles were, they had no peace. The Gentiles did not know that peace was available to them. And the Jews who knew God had promised peace were not experiencing what God had promised. Come on, Pastor. Right. Neither one was at peace with God because peace does not come by way of religious works. Peace does not come by way of keeping the law. Peace only comes by way of faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the only way man has peace. Paul writes that it was Christ who brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross, he broke down. Yeah. Jesus broke down the wall of hostility that separated man. He broke down the wall of hostility that separated Jew from Gentile. And he did this according to what Paul wrote in the verses we just read. By ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people. Not a people based on keeping the law. But a people based on faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ shed his blood. And his blood has brought us not only near to God as Gentiles, but has also brought to us the way of peace. The law, the system of law, with its commandments and regulations, separated you and Gentile. Listen, a system of law that had been given to one people but not the other. But that system did not bring salvation even to the Jew. It only pointed to the one 
who would bring salvation. It was the law with its commandments and regulations that created a chasm, a wall of separation between Jew and Gentile. And Jesus came to remove that partition. He came to remove that wall. Listen to what Matthew, what Jesus said in Matthew 5, 17. He said, don't misunderstand why I have come. I did not come to abolish the law of Moses or the writings of the prophets. No, I came to accomplish their purpose. Another version says, I came to fulfill the law and prophets. He came to fulfill for everyone the requirements of God's law that no one could fulfill. Jew nor Gentile. And all the law did was create separation. Jesus came and did what no one could do. And that's keep the system of law with its commandments and regulations. No one was able to do that but him. He fulfilled it to perfection. And now all men are accepted by God, not by how we keep the law, but by our faith in Jesus. We who are, who are Gentiles by nature, we were seen and known as outsiders by the Jews who have been given the law. Paul said, we were known as uncircumcised heathens. We were known as uncircumcised heathens by the ones who have been given the right of circumcision. Yet the only thing that circumcision affected was the natural, physical body of man. It did not change, and it does not change who we are on the inside. Only the blood of Jesus can change who we are. Amen. Let me point something out to you. You're going to get this. If man is justified and was justified by circumcision, what does that mean for you ladies? <laughs> what does that mean for you ladies? That you couldn't be at peace with God? No circumcision was given to the Jews as an act of obedience. But it did not cannot, does not bring salvation. Membership in God's family is based on what happens on the inside of us, not the outside. A child of God is someone who is born again in the spirit realm. Have you been born again? You know, I'm not sure we ask that question enough in the church. Come on. We assume everybody that comes through these doors are saved. We assume everybody that's right with God. Yet we know that's not the case. We know that many people in America have an idea, have religious practices, but their heart has never been circumcised. Come on, Pastor. If your heart has never been circumcised, if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, if you've never verbalized, Jesus, I make you Lord of my life. I know I cannot save myself. I know I cannot do good enough works to be saved. I trust you. I trust in your cross. I trust in your death. I trust in your resurrection. If you've never done that and made you Lord of your life, you have never been born again. Amen. Praise God. But the good news is you can be. Amen. You can be. Being born of the Spirit is the only act that makes us members of God's family. 
It's not, a, it's not a matter of ethnicity. It has nothing to do with social status. It doesn't matter what their family heritage may be. The only heritage that places us in God's family is acceptance of Jesus as Lord and Savior. But when the law was given to the Jews and not the Gentiles, it created separation. A separation that Jesus came to remove. And Paul in Ephesians 2, 11 to 12 give a list, gives us a list of the things that made Jews and Gentiles distinctively different. Now, now as I go through this list, think about God, Paul, Paul writes, and in the word of God, it says that God came to take these two people to make them one. Okay, listen to how distinct these two people were. Of the Jews, Paul said, they were proud of their circumcision. Their circumcision only affected their natural bodies. Their circumcision did not change what was in their hearts. They had the covenant promises of God. The Jews did. Their relationship with God was based on them keeping the law of those covenant promises. Keeping the law of the covenant. Concerning the Gentiles, Paul wrote, they were apart from Christ. They were excluded from citizenship. They did not know the covenant promises of God. They lived in the world without God, and they lived in the world without hope. Yet God said, I'm going to take these two people and make them one. What Paul wrote about the Gentiles, he wrote about us. Because by nature we are Gentiles, not Jews. We were apart from Christ. We were excluded from citizenship. We were without the covenant promises of God. We were living without God and without hope. But that's not our life anymore. If you're in Christ. If you're in Christ, you have been brought into the family of God by the shed blood of Jesus. If you're in Christ, you now live in this world with God and with hope. If you're in Christ, we now you now know the covenant promises of God are for you as well. You are a citizen of heaven, and you live in peace with God and with man. Are you kidding? Right. You can live in peace with God. You can live in peace with man. Amen. But listen, even for the born-again believer, it's a choice. It's a choice. But listen to what Paul writes in Philippians 3.20. He said, but we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. Ephesians 2, 6 says, God has raised us up together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This is, how, this is who we are now. This is where we are now. Colossians 3, 1, 2, 3. Since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the reality of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. Think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. I think you preached that, James. Didn't he preach a good message on praise and worship? Yeah. 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 Amen. Good word, brother. Yeah. 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 You are a citizen of heaven. What consumes you? What consumes your thought? What, what, what consumes your desire? Paul said, for you died to this life. What life? This life in the world. When you were put in Christ, when you accepted Jesus as Lord of your life, you got to get this. You died to this life. And your real life is now hid with Christ in 
And the mystery that Paul reveals in Ephesians is how God will form from two very distinct people groups, one body, one people, one faith, on one journey. And it wasn't easy. Still is not easy. Look around. Look at the church. Look at the American church. Still is not easy. But the Jews were a pious people who considered non-Jews unclean. God said, we'll make you one with these people that you consider to be unclean. They thought of themselves as pure and holy. They were justified by the keeping of the laws and the commands. And how about us Gentiles? The Gentiles were off chasing false gods. They trusted in their knowledge, their wisdom. They believed, listen, they believed they could create God in whatever image they wanted to, and then the God they created would then exercise power, control, and authority on their behalf. Is that not the stupidest thing you ever heard? Come on, Pastor. Come on, Pastor. And God said, I'm going to take these two people and make them one. In the eyes of God, neither was righteous. Jews and Gentiles alike were guilty of spiritual pride. The Jews felt their faith and traditions elevated them above the Gentiles. And Gentiles trusted in their achievements, their power, their position, what they could do. Even in the God that they created. Prior to the coming of Jesus, neither Jew nor Gentile had fully understood the way of faith that God would one day require. Each had trusted in what they knew and the way of um, and the way that God presented by Jesus was a potential stumbling block to both. They did not really understand God's plan. Even today, Jewish people don't understand. Yeah, you've heard me say this before, but when I was in Israel, I was in Israel four or five years ago. Had an amazing Jewish tour guide. He was not a believer. But he knew the word through and through. And wherever we would go, he'd, you know, he'd pull out either the, 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 the Hebrew Bible or he'd pull out a New Testament and he'd read from it. One day on the bus, I said, Mike, and we have these conversations. Just you know, had micro you know, uh, microphones and speakers on the bus, so you can have these open conversations with him. So I asked him a question. I said, Mike, I said, you have such great understanding of the Bible. And, 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 and the Bible that you read from, it, 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 it prophesies, it predicts all the things that Jesus fulfilled. Why did the Jews not believe that he's the Messiah? And I waited for this deep theological response. I mean, I'm getting ready for some. Okay, he's going to help me understand this. And what he said was, we just don't believe. <laughs> Brother, not this. He said, we just don't believe. <laughs> Why? Because Paul writes in other places they were blinded for a season that we may be grafted in. Amen. Amen. Have you been grafted in? Have you grafted in? Jesus came to rectify the situation. How, he, how to form it in one, two very distinct people. One people of one faith on the same journey. God's desire has not changed. He still has a plan to take the people of this world and make them into one. When you think about the American church, please hear this. Because I was thinking about this, I was trying to figure out how to say this, and I still may not have it right, but I'm going to just say it the way I got it. When you think about the American church, we have a lot more in common than the Jews and Gentiles had prior to the coming of Jesus. Amen. Right? A lot more to come. 
Yet, we continue to stumble over things that cause division in the church. We continue to stumble. There's still too many barriers that separate us from other Christians. Age. Appearance. Intelligence. Political persuasion. Economic status. Race. Theological perspectives. These are all things that we must overcome. One of the best ways to stifle Christ's love is to be friendly or nice to only those people who are like you. If you cannot love people that are different from you, you are not loving as God has love. I got love, Gary Jones, but I... <laughs> Jesus did not come to make us all the same as for the parents. But all the same is for his faith. Amen. And from that place of faith, live together as brothers and sisters in Christ that realize we're on this journey together. Amen. Listen, I've said it many times and I've said it again, I need you on my journey. Amen. I need you on my journey. Amen. I need you to pray for me. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's it. That's it. A few weeks ago, I shared it with the, with, with the class I was in on Wednesday night. A few weeks ago, I, I, was, I was really struggling with something. Just, just really struggling with something. It wasn't, again, please don't say it wasn't sin or nothing like that. It was just something I was struggling with. Amen. Amen. And I walked into the sanctuary. Here's the day we were starting off fast. The sister Nita called me. She said, Pastor, come in. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. She's real bossy. She's real bossy. <laughs> she said, sit down, sit down, sit down. She said, I got to be obedient to God. And she put her hands on my head. And she began to pray for my mind. God knew I was struggling with something in my mind. She had no idea. But her prayer brought me to a place. Where I needed to be. Amen. Yes. Please understand. We may stand before you and preach the word of God, but we are we're on this journey together. Amen. Amen. I have to live by faith just like you do. Come on, Pastor. Yeah. I struggle with the just like you do. I wrestle with God. Just like you do. I am no more holy than you are. Come on, Pastor. Because the same blood that cleansed me cleansed you. We're on, listen, we're on this journey together. We must exist as one people, a one faith that are traveling through life together. We gotta help each other. We gotta learn how to lock arms and fight and walk. Christ came to knock down the barriers that separated and to unify all believers into one family. And the cross of Jesus must be the focus of that unity. And we must learn how to yield to the Holy Spirit. He will help us to look beyond the barriers that separate those things that are different and help us to see the way the unity that God's called us to. Christ has brought peace to all, to Jew and Gentile. He has united us into one people by the shedding of his blood. It is not a thing of works, but it is by faith and faith alone. Jesus made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people. The only way for us to exist in this way is to be in Christ. Amen. 
Because it's in him that we remain to be one new people. He reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross. And the hostility that we feel towards each other has already been put to death. So if you have hostility towards others, you have not yet accepted the fullness of what, of what Christ came to do. Right. If you see others based on what they look like on the outside or based on their life views that, that may be different from yours, you're missing it. Most of the church as we know it is made up of Gentile. And even we can't get along. <laughs> Just think we all threw a few Jews in here. I mean, what, my God, what would we do? <laughs> Seriously. You got to get the past of what God did. He took, he took very, two very distinct people that couldn't be any different. And he said, I'm going to make you one. And we have as much as we do in common. And we still struggle with that oneness. What is wrong, church? What is wrong with the church? Jesus did just what God sent him to do. He put to death the enmity that existed between Jew and Gentile. He tore down the wall, the barriers of separation. No longer are Jews justified by their keeping of the law. No longer are Gentiles excluded because they do not have the law. The walls of separation have been, been removed. We can and should have real unity with people who are both like us and different from us. That is what reconciliation looks like. Amen. The enmity that, that once existed has been put to death. We now have access to the Father by the same Holy Spirit. We're no longer strangers and foreigners, Paul right with God, but we are being built up into a holy temple. No longer a Gentile rejected because they did not have the law. That which was the source of separation had been taken away. And in Christ Jesus, we're now one united people. Paul writes in verse 20, together, everyone say it, together, not divided, together, say it again, together, together we are his house, together, together we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. This building that we meet in is often mistakenly called God's house. This is not the house of God. This is a place of assembly where we come to worship God together, where we come to, to fellowship God's in here. <laughs> because God lives in you. Not in a house. Not in a building. But in you. His construct. His building. His house that he's built to the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's, let's, let's stop getting twisted. Amen. Uh -oh. Now, that does not mean that we are to in any way profane and violate this house. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. That's it. Come on. Just like you should not profane. Uh oh. <laughs> Because wherever you are, if you're in Christ, wherever you are, where is Christ? He's right there. So don't profane your dwelling place. Invite God into that place. 
God's house is not a building made with straw, with straw brick, hail, stubble. Right. God's house is people. Amen. A people that he lives in. Amen. A people that he shows himself to, to a world that is watching, waiting, and listen, hopeful of a better life. People will see that the God we serve is truly a God of love. And that Jesus is his son. When they see us living as one people who loves each other. When they see us living like citizens of God's kingdom and members of his household, they too will have hope. the church. We are God's spiritual house that has been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. We have a rich spiritual heritage that was passed down to us by the prophets, by the apostles and prophets of old. God has said in the church, his power, his anointing, his enablement. We can now live and lead as, as apostles of Christ. We can now prophetically declare the words of the living God. It is in our DNA. Change your neighbor's and neighbor. It's in the DNA. It is in our DNA to do what Jesus did. To love like Jesus loved. It is in our DNA to be a people of love unity and acceptance of others. Amen. Listen, it is in our DNA to be able to look beyond what we see on the outside of people that look different. Amen. It's in our DNA we've been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself is the chief cornerstone. We are God's spiritual house, a building erected by the Holy Spirit that is being fitted together. This God's building His house. We take you. We take you. We take you. And He began to and He take me and you and you and He began to build this house. Fitly joining together each piece where it properly belongs. Each piece. And only God knows that. Only God knows that. But we're being fitted together. Fitted together by the Holy Spirit. Into a spiritual house for God. A dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. We're not talking about a temple that is made with the building materials of this world. But one that is being built with the resources of heaven. This building that God is building is being built for a dwelling place of God by the Holy Spirit. He's building a house that he himself can come and live in. You are perhaps a room in that house. You are a portion of that house.
Thank you. 